Hi, so I'm going to be explaining a little bit uh, about the other figures in the Convolutional Neural Networks chapter of the Deep Learning book. So, um, in this book, to, to, to give you a few examples of why um, co Convolutional Neural Networks are a good idea to do um, for machine learning, and uh, so one of the figures that um, they show, it compares sparse connectivity to dense connectivity. So what we've been doing previously in this class corresponds to this bottom situation here, where um, th this is the dense connectivity, which is typical of a fully connected neural network. And so the reason why we uh, call it a fully connected layer is because every one of the input units, these xi at the, on the bottom row here, is connected to every one of these output units, this S1 uh, to S5 here. So what it means is that if you look at X1, there's actually, um, there should be five different connections here, going to one, two, three, four, and five, right? So same thing with X2, it's connected to S1 through five. So there's a total of N squared connections, you know, 20, there, there should be, um, uh, o of n squared connections in uh, if you have n hidden units in the input and the output layer here. Um, so the difference with the um, yeah, I mean, so and so the dense connectivity it, it's good in some situations, but um, it can be computationally expensive and statistically expensive, and that means so computationally expensive. I mean, it takes a lot of time to compute and learn and it also takes a lot of memory or to, to store all of those parameters. So um, it, it's statistically expensive. It means there's a lot of parameters so you need a lot of data to learn all of those parameters. So in contrast, if we look at the sparse connectivity, the top of this figure here, uh, this is a situation that corresponds to what we do in um, in uh, convolutional neural networks and so if we focus on just one of the units here uh, x3 we see that actually it's only connected to um, the unit right on top of it and it's t uh, two neighbors to the left and the right so um, you can see that it results in a lot fewer connections and in fact that reduces the number of connections uh, f from a quadratic dependence on the number of unit units to a linear dependence on the number of units right so it can be, make a really big difference when you have a lot of hidden units. Uh, so, I mean, um, uh, yeah, so it can make a really big difference and it can be really beneficial in terms of um, all three of the criteria we just discussed. In terms of computation time, it should be easier, uh, faster to compute uh, predictions and faster to compute gradients for learning. You can also be a lot, um, a lot easier to store because there's a lot less fewer parameters and it's a lot easier to learn so statistically uh, can be a lot easier because you, d you don't need enough uh, as you probably don't need as many examples to learn those parameters because there's not as many of them so uh, yeah so this is what we mean when we talk about sparse connectivity we're talking about um, here instead of being connected to all of the units like here x3 is only connected to s2 s3 and s4 right it's not connected to s1 and s5 anymore whereas in the previous diagram it was connected to s1 and s5 right so this is the situation that corresponds to the fully connected neural network and this is the situation that corresponds to the convolutional neural network